and uh, good afternoon. I'm just um, showing uh, my sort of methods for uh, working on a bow. I've been working on bows for decades. I uh, <coughs> don't follow any sort of anything sort of too scientific or anything. I just get the pieces of you and sort of sort of feel how they work and, and just go with it. I guess how that, that's how these Mesolithic people would have done it. They wouldn't have had any diagrams or anything. Of course, they would have had a bit of um, flint rather than this. And they would have had to have split quite a bit of the wood off to start with, otherwise they'd have never got, got it finished. I don't think they'd be able to season. I, uh, the idea of uh, waiting two years like I have for... Um, the wood to season before they make a bow. I think that would be a bit, uh, bit uh, long to say the least if you're walking around all the time. So, <laughs> just been shaving some holly arrows down. Um, usually use hazel. These are a bit more hard work because they're not. But uh, see how it goes. So I tend to use all my um, carving. This old uh, Sainer knife. Sheffield steel. 100 years old. Here's some staves of you. Which have been going for two years and I've used one of the staves to make this bow. This is my latest bow with the rawhide backing. I just uh, show some of the tools that I might use. Now you tend to use a, a box plane like this to get rid of a lot of the meat off the wood to start off with. I don't um, tend to use these uh, draw knives much because you can really go to town with them. You can get rid of a lot of a lot of the wood and go too far. I don't tend to draw a lot of stuff and make marks apart from the hand one on the bow. I tend to work with the the knots and everything and just sort of see where I can clean it out. So one of these, perhaps at the beginning when you're taking the stave down, but you can just you can really take too much off. So I just sort of go to this, to this knife. And it's harder work, but I don't go too far with it. And then one can use a wood rasp as well. This is a wood rasp that I uh, tend to use if uh, I want to get rid of some tough pieces, you know. So I just, just show what I sort of, um, how I tend to sort of uh, work my bows. I haven't fully tried this bow out yet, so I'm making my uh, arrows for this one, and I'll give it a, a spin out in the woods behind us, see what it's capable of. It's um, about six foot uh, four in length, a flat bow. It should have plenty of power. I haven't actually measured the power of it, but I'll be, uh, I can report back when I've done it. Just showing the tools in detail. Anyway, this, this is the, um, the holly. I've got a, quite a bit of work to do on this, so I've got to straighten it out over, over a flame. It's pretty straight, but I, and there were some nasty knots in it, but I've got to straighten it out. There's one I gotta there's one I gotta work on. You can just see the kind of knots I have to take out. There's the knife I tend to use. I like the curved nature of it, it means it does it stays on the job, it doesn't slip off. And here's the um staves. I split them in, I get the stave, then I split them in two, and I've used one half of this. 
and here's the bow with the just showing the uh, just showing the uh, rawhide wrapping on it. This is um, soaked in warm water and then glued on with wood well wood glue or any sort of similar glue. I'm going to look through this material to see if I can get a long bow, a round long bow, but it's it's pretty difficult because you've just got knots and quite big ones in this material. That's why it's best for flat bow. You see there's a, there's a really big knot there. I've had to bind it. Anyway, it'd be nice to try this out. Lovely material. I've kept the I haven't gone down to sort of keeping the keeping one uh, growth ring because I'm using this uh, rawhide. So, but I've kept most of the um, sapwood on the top and the heartwood inside, so it's got the springiness and the the stiffness together. So, let's we'll see one. See how that does. Just finishing off these um, holly arrows. Uh, I've straightened them over the gas ring to do sort of very carefully not to burn them, not to snap out to get them hot enough. <coughs> I've sort of carved them down with a knife, cut the ends off, and now I'm just sanding them, ready for the. So the notches, I'll cut the notches. Then I'm going to flex them with some goose feathers. Pretty straight considering they had all kinds of knots and everything in them. I'll probably give them a lick of varnish as well just to stop them soaking up sort of moisture and bending. using a small saw that useful size just to sort of have in have in the pocket.
thin this down a bit more in the end. This old knife, I tend to use it for all the stuff. This one I've actually got a, when I bent this, I heated it up quite a bit, but it's still got a little bit of a split. But being holly, it's still pretty strong, and I, I may just bind that. I'm going to tie cotton round it anyway, I'm going to flat it with using cotton and then some varnish. Obviously I'd use sinew if I had access to it. So I might just put some cotton around that and slide it's a, it's a slight split but it shouldn't make any difference. Back it up the varnish as well. Anyway, I'll just show this um this bow again. Just showing this um, business with the knocks, there aren't any knocks on it. I'm going back to a sort of stone age, sort of end, end tip of the bow, and uh, a lot of primitive people, well I call them primitive, but I mean, you know, hunter gatherers or whatever, they, this is what they use. The bushmen have this kind of end to the bow. It didn't seem to make a lot of difference to cut on this. I'll have to make a string out of some out of some line. That's the stuff. Just looks like a bit of dead grass but it's very strong so I'll have to wet it and then make a three ply string for the bow itself and here's one of the goose feathers I'm going to use on the on the arrows it's a nice um, nice sizes there so I want to do a bit of calligraphy as well this is what I tend to do all the time when I'm working the bow down with the um, working the stave down to the, the sort of shape of the bow with the knife I tend to um, 
just keep flexing it all the time to see where the bend is. I want it all the way across the length. Not just at the ends. But I want a sort of stiffness around here a bit. So I keep doing that all the time. If I need to rework this bow, for instance, sort of carve this down thinner, I wouldn't hesitate just to take this this raw hide off. It's easy to take off. Just get it nice and wet. And almost sort of leave the glue on. It'll come off. I can work the bow and then uh, put the same stuff identically back where it is, where it's been. I've actually done this before when I've made a bow that's just a little bit too heavy on the, uh, the point. So that's what I do. I've got a, it's a bit of a set on this the, the wrong way, which basically gives me more power. It's just the way the woods come and I haven't heat treated that. I've just left it just a little bit on that edge. Showing one of the arrows I made. It's a close up of the fletching the goose feathers. I haven't put a, I just tied the top, but I haven't put any arrowhead on it yet, just for safety reasons. Now I've tried these arrows out and the bow, and they've worked fantastic. They've got all the power I would want. So. I'll try and show, um, I'll try and take a film of the um, arrow in action if I get a chance one day. Just the notch at the end I've tied as well. Needs a bit more varnish. And this holly sort of works out quite straight in the end, straight enough, even though it starts off with a sort of a bit of a, a bit of a mess. Pretty good, it's quite a nice and heavy for an arrow.